How's it going guys? Welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this time I'm going to create a little simple light fixture that you can dot around your 3D environments uh, and will actually glow itself and emit light. Uh, so what we're going to be looking for is something similar to what you can see here. Uh, a long fluorescent strip light, uh, metal casing with the kind of cage around it. Now I'm going to make a wall mounted one. A lot of these are, a lot of the ones in the images here are sort of hanging from the ceiling on chains. You could easily adapt this to be that kind of light. Um, just if you want to make the extra assets, very, very quick and easy to do. But I'm going to make mine, I'm going to keep it nice and simple and just make a little wall mounted uh, light fixture. So let's go into 3D Studio Max. Uh, let's start a new project and we will just go and start with a simple box. And we'll try and center this around our origin point. So look for this black square on your grid. I'll draw out our first little box here. And I want to make a size of it about 80 centimeters. Uh, so that is about that length. Height, I will just drag you down a wee bit. I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not going to get any specific uh, existing measurements. Uh, chances are, if you're doing this, you'll be doing it maybe for a, a sci fi game where you're making everything from scratch anyway. Um, so let me see that looks about okay excuse me uh, pardon me very unprofessional of me uh okay so that's grand right click and we are going to convert to edible poly i'm going to go into my polygon mode and just to add a little bit of uh a little bit of identity to this rather than just having a simple uh rectangular cuboid shape I'm just going to extrude out the edges here ever so slightly, maybe about one or two centimeters, not much at all. And I'm going to take my scale tool here and I'm just going to scale in those edges. There we go, do that both sides, just as I say, so it's not just a plain, uh, we didn't just call it a, a plain rectangle, give it a little bit of, um, a little bit of design. So next thing I want to do, I want to add just a little bit of a rim here at the top. So I'm going to activate my swift loop. If you don't have this here, uh, all these options, just come up to customize, show UI, and show ribbon. This is known as the ribbon. This whole strip along the top, and we've got four or five different uh, sub menus in here. But generally, we're going to be on modeling. And we want swift loop, and swift loop is a great little tool. that lets us just uh, eyeball in an extra edge loop here. So not good for specific measurements but again when we're just eyeballing it brilliant tool so in polygon mode again i'm going to just select one random polygon hold the shift key and that allows us to select that entire edge loop there we go and i'm going to extrude these guys and if i look on top uh, let me see i want to change this to local normal Appreciate the colors not very good. I will change that shortly for you. Uh, and then we'll just eyeball that. I'm just going to bring out a very, very slight amount, not much at all. There we go. That's perfect. So, yeah, I'm just going to change the color on this guy. Just come up to our little box here and we'll go something darker just so we can see these white lines a bit better. There we go. Perfect. Now I want to do the same thing on the top here. I'm going to select all of these and Again, holding shift to select the edge loop and extrude, click on the little sentence button. Uh, just probably about the same amount will do grand. So that's lovely. That's my little shape. That's what I want for the kind of the base piece of this light. Um, one thing though, I can get rid of this line of polys here. If I, or sorry, line of edges. So I select my edge mode. As you can see, we've got a top row of polys and a bottom row of polys, but they're both uh, in line with each other. So what we can do is if we just double click this layer here. Whoops, I shouldn't have moved that. Just double click to select that entire edge loop. What we can do is hold the control and backspace keys. And it's very careful we get the, the correct button combination here. Control backspace, and what that will do is get rid of that line and actually merge those two polys into a single polygon. If we had just hit the delete key there, it would have deleted all of those uh, polys. If we had just hit the, the, the backspace key, it would actually have left the vertices behind as well. So it would have looked correct, but it wouldn't have been correct. So it's very important to use control backspace. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. 
I am happy enough with that. What I want to do now is go into my top level. And I'm just going to create a simple little box again. Just something very small. And this is going to be what kind of contains or, or not contains, but backs into your light bulbs. There we go, just something very, very simple. Now what I could do, uh, if I was being really precise, I would go in underneath and delete that bottom polygon, uh, just to try and minimize our poly count, but I'm not too fussed. Uh, what I may do is just convert to edible poly. Press the number four key on my keyboard, will put us into polygon mode. Select this top one, I'm just going to repeat the same thing I did before. Uh, just to add a little bit of something to it. I'll just scale that in. There we go. Again, not accurate yet. I'm just, uh, just winging this as I go. And what I will do is I will actually oops, right click back to top level. And with my move tool selected, I'm going to hold shift. Oops, wrong object. Silly Michael. Make sure we have the right object selected. Hold shift and select it down. Move to the other end and that will just be where the other side of our light fixture goes. Uh, just leave it as a copy, that's fine. And um, what I will do is go into my vertex mode. Select all these vertexes and just scale it down a bit. Now you'll notice I went into the sub object mode and scaled down the vertices. I can still use the scale tool here in top object mode. Uh, just control Z that. Um, but it can get a little bit glitchy doing that when it comes into other pieces of software. So it's always better to do those at the sub object level. Uh, okay, next thing I want to do, I want to create the lights themselves. Go to create a cylinder. So just start with anything at all for now. Uh, I'm going to rotate it in the correct direction, but I'm going to activate my snaps toggle just so I can turn this exactly 90 degrees. Just look for your little yellow numbers there or down at the bottom here for 90 degrees. And now we'll move this in a rough position. That's nowhere near where it should be. Let me see, that's looking more like it now. Let's see, there we are. There we go. So that's obviously a little bit too chunky there. What we're going to do is create uh, two, two uh, of the, the strip lights here, just side by side. So I'm going to size one of them. Uh, let me see, radius. We'll pull the radius down a little bit because we don't want it clipping through the ground underneath or the, the surface underneath. There we go. Uh, we will bring the length up, or the height rather in this case just until it's touching that next end. It goes over a little bit, that's totally fine. Height segments, I for this case, I'm just going to do three. I'm going to change this color again because you can't see what's going on. I'll go dark green this time. Uh, height segments, I only want three. And actual sides, I'm going to lower this way down to six. Seems very low, but it's going to be glowing bright white, so we'll not actually be able to see the shape of it at all. Uh, smooth, yes, we want it to be smooth. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to right click and convert to edible poly. I'm going to double check that you can actually see what I'm doing here, and I didn't leave it on the title screen. We're all good. Happy days. Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do. I'm just going to delete this little end piece. I'm going to delete this little end piece. Simply because we don't need them in there. I'm going to go to my vertex mode. And I'm going to move this one down here. To near the end. And select these verts. And move this one down near the end. 
and that's grand. Uh, deactivate our sub object mode. Reposition this back down where it should be. And now I will hold shift and just make a duplicate of it. Try and eyeball it to roughly the right place. And that doesn't look too bad. If I press T in my top view, I can just check and see how that's looking. That's not too bad. Um, I've maybe got a little bit too much extra space here either side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this. Um, also, I've just noticed we're a little bit too high here. So I'm just going to move the base. And eyeball it and line it up correctly that'll do and then just peel in these other little side bits here just so we don't have too much space either side of it might make it look a bit weird there we go okay final thing i want to do is add a little cage on top uh hit p for my perspective mode there uh, you could if you want create a little uh, glass enclosure around these uh, I'm not going to do that. I've seen some examples of this without that. I'm just going to leave it a little cage and add that little cage. What I'm going to do is once again create a box. It's a very tiny thin box. Actually, no, do you know, uh, da, 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 da. quicker way of doing it. We'll take this guy here. We'll take this guy. Uh, I'll just shift and create a copy of him. We duplicate and just move out of the way. And just move it over here a little bit purely for the fact that i've added in this little uh chamfered corner here which is what i want to do so this guy he already is a uh, poly yes he is so select my polygon mode and i want to delete a few of these polygons i want to delete that bottom side i want to delete this i want to delete that and i want to shrink this down make it a lot narrower just select all these polys on this side. I'll bring it in nice and narrow. That is lovely. Uh, I know I need to make this a little bit taller and a little bit wider. So let me just come out of the sub object mode. Move you kind of back into a rough position. And we're just going to try and eyeball this best we can. Should be just about touching there. We will come back in here sub object mode. Raise all these top guys a bit higher. And just move them out until they're touching this edge. Or as close as we can get it. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that's brilliant. We've got one piece now. What we're going to do is we're going to move this guy right down to the very corner here. And now I am going to hold shift and just move him along. Uh, let me see, maybe about that much. And when we get this little box here, that will say copy instance etc. Yep, we'll just leave it as a copy. But number of copies, we're going to put this way up. I'm going to just type in 20 here. I probably won't need 20, but I'll make 20, let that chug on, and it produces them all. And then what I can do is I can just erase all these ones that are extra that I don't need. Uh, so what I'll need to do then is just select them and even them out a little bit. This will be a little bit tedious just selecting them all, but just hold control, click, select each one. And I'm just going to move them over now so that they are all roughly in the middle and there's just kind of the same amount left as there is right uh, okay brilliant what i could do now while i have these all selected uh, i'm going to add what's called a shell modifier 
So just over here, my modify panel, uh, this little second one. Uh, scroll down until you find shell. And what this does, you can see, it takes it from being just a single line of flat polygons and basically extrudes it out into a solid shape. Now, that's a bit too big for what I want. We can do an inner amount and an outer amount. So I'm going to pull this outer amount down to zero and put the inner amount just to uh, maybe one to two millimeters, maybe one and a half to two millimeters. That looks okay. Um, there we are. Just make sure when there's inner or outer amount, you're not clipping through this piece here. That is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So now uh, those are all in position. I'm going to just select one piece and grab it and pull it over here as a copy. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. If I can select the right axis here. And just press T on my keyboard again, just to go to the top view. I'm going to position this here like so. And now you will notice that it is clipping through this one here. We don't want that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce that inner amount on the shell and increase the outer amount on the shell by about the same amount. And now it's sitting on top and that's far nicer. So that's perfect. Now we just watch and see here that we're now clipping through. So just pull this over ever so slightly. And last thing we need to do, just go back to your editable poly, go to your vertex mode and select all these right vertices. And we'll just move this right over towards the end. And that's perfect. If we, put, if we go back up on our stack and activate the shell, that is, that is great. So I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe one thing I will do if it's going to perspective mode. Maybe da, 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 depending on your design you want to do or how realistic or whatever your design choices are. I'm thinking that's good, but there's maybe just a little bit too much room here at the base. I want it to be a little less heavy and in, in the back side. So I'm just going to select this object, come into my polygon mode. Just select these bottom couple of polygons and I'm just going to move these up just to take some of the weight out of it a little bit. That's not looking too bad. Okay, perfect. Uh, just give it a little once over. Am I happy with this design? I think that's looking not too bad. Um, I'm not going to detail up any further than this, but what you could do, you could add a couple more wee boxes and bits and pieces in here. As I said, you can add the glass piece in if you want as well. Um, you could even just take this box, uh, repeat the kind of process we did for these guys, but without changing the size. Uh, take it, keep these uh, this outer kind of layer of polys and just stretch them along, and you could use that to make your glass. Um, but I'm going to leave this as is. I'm just going to open my material editor here, and I'm going to drop this material onto everything and I'll just call this my strip light uh, purely so that when we go into Substance Painter or Texture Set we'll have that name on it. Uh, another thing I could do which might be useful if I just take this sort of piece of the cage and I will call this cage I am going to no, I'm not actually. I'll be a little bit I was going to attach these guys, but if I attach them as they are, I will need to first of all collapse everything and edit the poly again, or else the shell uh, from this one will override the other shells. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'll not overcomplicate it. Um, that's that's grand. We will leave as is. So we'll just save this project here. File, uh, save. And where do I have my photos? So I made a, uh, a mock up version of this yesterday. 
So I've got the full row already saved. Uh, prop strip light, we'll call this one strip light B. There we go. And before we export, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select everything. Remember, good practice is to always come in here to our hierarchy tab, then they just transform and reset, transform, reset, scale. And that is us good to go. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to go file, export, export selected. Go to that same folder, uh, industrial strip light. Uh, prop strip light, call it some prop strip light B. Don't need to touch in here in the FBX export, so just hit OK. And we'll let that run through. And fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video just while I close down 3D Studio Max and open up Substance Painter. So I will see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, here we are again. Uh, and we're opening Substance Painter now. So very easy process. We've done a couple of times before. Just go to File and New. Uh, Template is PBR Metallic Roughness, that's fine, don't need to touch that. Our file, we're just going to load up that little file we export it. Prop strip light B. Uh, document resolution, I'm going to set this to 2048. Uh, I always like to work big, and then if needs be, we can shrink down the texture sizes. Actually, I've just remembered I haven't unwrapped this. So, yeah, forget that. I need to go back to 3D Studio Max and unwrap this. Uh, just we'll learn from our mistakes we'll see here there is our UV map because I haven't unwrapped it at all and it's completely useless so let's quickly go back to 3d studio max there we are sorry about that guys one absolute beginner foolish mistake I just made there uh, okay so just select everything go to your modifier panel and let it load up and we will unwrap our UVW. Just open our UV editor map. And I'm not going to spend any time on this unwrap at all. I'm just going to go into my polygon mode. I'm going to select everything. And make sure that is everything selected. Yes, it is. That looks good. And for this, I'm just going to go flatten mapping. That is a terrible, terrible unwrap because you can see how much wasted space we've got there. All that plain checkered is wasted space, but I'm not going to agonize over it. I will just close that down and we will re export again. File, export selected. And let me see my quick access. And just overwrite that strip light B that we made. Yes, I want to replace that one. And hit OK. I swear this tutorial I'm making is cursed. I tried to do the same tutorial yesterday and my video lagged on me. And here today I'm exporting it and forgetting the unwrap. I just can't seem to do this one right. Hopefully we get through the rest of it with no issues. So once again, go open up Substance Painter and I'll see you in a second. And here we are back. Okay, so let's repeat that process. Just file new. Set our size to 2048. And load up our little file there. Hopefully it will save the location. Yep, there we are. Prop strip light B. Open that up. And hopefully, take your time, laptop. There we go. Okay, so there we can see we've got a much better UV map in there now. Uh, and our strip light's not looking too bad. So first thing we have to do is back out our texture maps. So down here in texture set settings, we'll just uh, come down here to back mesh maps. And I want you just to leave the output size as is. And we're just going to click this button, use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. So we have to do, and then come down here, back strip light mesh maps. 
And what this is doing, we're going to paint our textures and create our textures for the likes of the normal map and for the uh, color map and things like that. But back in these mesh maps is to back some other ones uh, automatically. So the likes of ambient occlusion um, and a few other things that we don't necessarily paint directly, but are useful to have pre-generated for us. They're pre-generated maps that help kind of enhance the other ones. Uh, the main one I find that has the most effect is what's called the ambient occlusion, which is adding in the little shadows of like deep corners and things like that. Uh, so, okay, that's that done. Now we can start actually painting this guy. What I want to do is uh, I'll just throw a little coat of paint over everything here. First of all, so I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose. I, I want to give it a nice kind of rust feel. So I'm going to type rust here into my materials. And there's a material called rust fine, pre made in the materials. I'm going to drag it on. And you'll see there that it covers everything. Now we don't want it to cover everything. So I'm going to add a black mask to this to hide it again and then I'm going to come to my little tool here polygon fill and I'm going to select the mesh fill option what the mesh fill option does is it'll select each individual object and we click on it it will fill it with that so there we go uh, now I'm going to take another material what should we go for uh, go for a paint Still painted, this will do, and we'll drag that on top. So it's given us a black color, that's very, very dark there, you can't see. Um, and what we're going to do is just on the paint color here, we'll change this to something else, maybe a kind of a lighter greenish kind of color. That's maybe a bit too light, maybe desaturate it a bit as well. And we will also put a black mask on here. And same thing again with a little mesh selection. And now we have a layer of paint. Or we will do when it activates. There we go. We now have a layer of paint on top of a layer of rust. And what we can do with this mask then is with our paint rust tool selected, we can choose an alpha say something that looks a bit scratchy or a bit dirty uh, let me see dirt smudge this might do the job i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this i'm just going to show you what we can do and then you can spend more time on it yourself so control and mouse wheel just to make that brush bigger or smaller uh, select that mask if i paint at the minute nothing will happen because I am painting in white, which will reveal this. But if I move that down to black and I start painting on, you will see the rust start to come through. So what this is doing is it's hiding the paint layer and showing the rust underneath. So you don't necessarily have to add this rust. This uh, It depends entirely on the environment you're making. If you're doing a nice new pristine warehouse, they'll all be freshly painted. But if it's a, an old, decrepit, kind of closed down factory warehouse that hasn't been looked at in 20 years, then you're going to get all this rust. So you can just start adding that in there. Uh, and that's grand. So let's start. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that to you. You can apply as necessary. But let's go and fill the rest here. So I'm going to add a aluminium. And I'm just going to drag this on top of the whole thing and then add my black mask once again. And I'm just going to pick out parts that I want to have that aluminium. I'm just going to pick the cage file. Now, had I actually merged these, would have been sensible. One button click would have done. But it's no big deal just to select them all. Oops, not that one. Well, 
it fiddle here. There we go. Aluminium might not even be the right material for these guys, but it'll do. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little plastic. Uh, plastic, plastic grainy, plastic. Plastic mat will do fine, just for these end pieces here. Same thing, add our black mask. We'll pick the polys. I'm going to pick this. Come on, this one. My mouse clicks are barely registering here for some reason. So I know it's bright blue, but I want bright blue. But we can change this in a wee second. We just want to pick the two pieces we want. And down here in the black plastic mat. Uh, we can just change the base color just to kind of a, an off white, and that will do. Uh, and we are nearly done. The last thing we need to do is then uh, put the brightness on the light bulbs themselves. So, how I want to do this, we need to actually add a new channel to our texture set. So let me just give a little bit more room here to see what's going on. Uh, right now we have base color, height, roughness, metallic and normal. And in our properties you can see that those are all different things that we can change in our paintbrush or on our paint bucket. Color, height, normal, roughness, blah blah blah. So we need to come in here and just scroll over. Well, ideally you should be able to scroll over it. There we go. Uh, and beside here where it says channels, we just want to hit this little plus icon. And then we want to choose what's called emissive. And emissive is what lets things glow. So we're going to make a new fill there. And see that fills everything. But what we want to do is set it so that we're not affecting any of the rest of these. We're only going to affect the color and the emissiveness. And the base color, we're going to set this, we can set it up to white. Uh, we can set it, maybe maybe just give it a little bit of color. Maybe just a very, very light blue. Just something like that. And then the emissive uniform. We will set that up as well. Just that light blue. We technically, we don't even really need the color at all, actually. We just have the emissive, that light blue color. You can see it just brightens it a wee bit if we have that color in there. Uh, I'll leave it on, it's not too bad. But what we want to do is, once again, add our black mask. And we only want it to be on the bulbs. What I'm going to do is, uh, you saw back earlier in the video, we have these little pieces here at the end. These are just kind of like little end cap pieces for the bulb. So what I'm going to do is plastic matte pure, the, the plastic layer. We are going to go back to our mask and we're going to fill this again. But instead of filling the whole mesh, I'm just going to go one button left just to select polygons. And just to select these couple of the edge polygons. Mouse is being so fiddly trying to select these. I'm trying very hard to do it without it also selecting the piece underneath. This has been really annoying. I don't know why it's being so fiddly. It's being very, very fiddly. I'm clicking away here, and it's taking a bit of fifth click. I don't know if that's a problem with my laptop or a problem with the software. Hopefully, you won't have the same trouble. Come on, oh, for God's sake. You see, if I click and it's clicking through onto the servers underneath, that's really annoying. Okay, so there's a couple of pieces on the other side, but I don't want to spend 20 minutes trying to get that. So, back to our fill layer. Uh, we're going to fill with the same thing, just with the polygon fill. Just select the surfaces that we actually want here. I 
And we want to get these, we also want to get underneath. And we do actually want to try and get, if we can, uh, let's see if I can get in here. Yes, we want to get these pieces and these pieces. So that should be everything now. Of course, you're not click the one I actually wanted to click. There we go. That is perfect. So last wee thing I need to do is do the other end of this plastic up here. Take that plastic mat layer. Color those. Click them for about 10 goddamn minutes until they decide to actually change. Oh, God's sake. This is very frustrating. Hopefully you guys don't have the same trouble doing this. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. I'm going to put it down to just my laptop. Oh, for God's sake. There we go, that's good enough. Good enough just before I want to throw my laptop out the window anyway. Uh, okay, there we are. That is everything done. That's looking not too bad. I'm happy with that. What I could maybe do is I will maybe uh, dull down that aluminium a little bit. It's very, very bright. I will maybe just add, I can change the base color a little bit actually, just dull it down, just so it's not quite so shiny on top. I kind of like that little green sheen to it, especially because the base is green, that's quite nice. Uh, what I could do, just to finish it off, you see we've got a rust layer there, we could also add a dirt layer, uh, just add a new plain layer, uh, bring it up to the top of our stack, or maybe just down. Uh, bring it underneath our lights because we won't want any dirt on top of our lights. And we'll just call this one dirt. I'll just check we're actually recording this correctly. I'm, I'm fully expecting this video to be jinxed and something goes wrong. Uh, okay, on our dirt layer, we're just going to take our regular paintbrush tool. And then our base color will set to kind of a dirty brown. And we'll just set our alpha to something kind of grungy. Let's see what we have here. Moisture and mold. This mold one could work quite well. And again, we'll just start painting on that there. So again, your mileage may vary. This is uh, entirely dependent on uh, the environment you're putting in. Is it a clean uh, new environment or is it a dirty old environment? You can see that we're just adding that dirt and we can uh, change the color, change the, um, or metallic we set to zero. Probably want the roughness up high on that just so there's less of a, a kind of a, a shiny sheen on it. Stuff like that and just start de detailing it up as you need. I'm not going to put too much dirt on here. I'm just showing you that's how we can do that. And that is available to you. But otherwise, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to stop the video here um, and then go back and maybe just finish this off. To kind of render out to see the final version of it. But um, for the video, I'll leave it there. Uh, the last thing I want to do is just show you how you actually export those textures to take into your game engine. So very simple, just go to File, Export Textures. Uh, let me just shrink this down a bit. Never seems to come the right size on my screen. Uh, our file type's got to be PNG, that's fine. Uh, in here, we can click where we actually want to save these two. So I would save them to the folder uh, that the rest of my stuff is in. We can see here the texture set what's actually going to get exported. We're going to have a base color map, we're going to have a roughness, metallic, normal, height map, and there's the emissive map that we also added in as well. The one that's actually making the lights glow. And to get these out, all we have to do is hit the export option. 
and that will just uh, put those out as separate image files. Uh, you can see here as we're exporting, our document size is 2048, but we can actually put these out smaller if we want. So say we're going for mobile or we're going for the lower specs on an old PC, we can shrink these textures down. But it's always good to start with the larger ones to begin with. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel here. I'm not actually going to render these out, but literally just hit that export button and that'll be you sort it ready to go into your game engine. Uh, I'm going to leave this video here and then go and play with this for a while, see if I can pretty it up. And when I upload the video, the kind of the thumbnail itself that you see, I'll probably show you how I've detailed this up. Uh, okay, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that video recorded correctly. I recorded the whole thing yesterday and it messed up on me. Um, if you have any questions or queries, please ask in the comments down below. And thank you very much, guys. All the best. Goodbye.